Good morning. Good morning and welcome, welcome to this uh, morning service, our family service. It's good to see you all. It is good to see you looking well. And we just want to thank the Lord and praise Him for taking us through a week with its challenges, with its blessings, but bringing us together to worship Him and to praise Him. So before we begin with our singing and our worship, let's just have a word with the Lord. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you and bless you. We just want to thank you for giving us life and letting us see this new day where we can just lift up our hearts to you, lift up our voices and our hands as we just magnify you and praise you. And Father, we just ask that as we do this, you may descend in this sanctuary and cover us with your spirit so that, Lord, whatever challenges, whatever burdens we have come, we may leave them at your feet and start yet another week light and in your word. For, Lord, we thank you and we bless you. Indeed, Lord, we want that your eyes be open and your ears be attentive to the prayers that we will offer in this service, to the songs that we will sing in this service. We want you to arise, O oh Lord, and come to your resting place. Because, Lord, we are your priests, clothed with your salvation. And may we rejoice in your goodness. Oh, Lord, we bless you and we thank you. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. I'd ask you to please stand and join us in singing. As we just ask the Lord to come into our hearts and open our hearts and our eyes. So that he may let us see him.
before the Lord at this time and ask him to cleanse your heart this morning. That whatever it is that you have done that's against him, that he would cleanse your heart this morning, that you would be able to see him. That you would be able to hear his will for your life today. Come before him. He is here and he is willing to hear you. He is faithful and just to forgive of all unrighteousness and renew a right spirit within us. So come before him this morning. What else can we do this morning but give him praise? Come on, put those hands together like this as we praise the Lord in this church.
wonderful thing. Isn't it amazing that not only are God's promises true for us, but scripture calls us to remind us about them. In Matthew 11, God promises to give you rest. In Ephesians 3, 14 to 16, he promises to strengthen you. In Matthew 7, he says, he will answer your prayers. And that's our next song, that when we stand on his promises, indeed, there is nothing that can shake us. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King, because through eternal ages, we want to let his praises ring. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory.
is our desire this morning. We just long to worship you. We want to exalt you, O oh God. We want every aspect of our lives, O oh God, to yield to you, O oh God. That is our desire, to worship you, to praise you, to honor your name, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that you allow us that privilege to just come before you and honor you and praise you and lift your name, O oh God. We honor you, O oh God. What a privilege it is, O oh God, because that is a place that we do not deserve. Yet you, O oh God, so mighty, yet so loving, invites us into your presence with confidence, O oh God. And so we just want to honor you. We just want to praise you. We just want to lift your name. We just want to say, oh God, you are good. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of adoration. You're worthy to be lifted, oh God. You, oh God, are worthy. We worship you. We glorify you this morning. Be lifted. Be lifted on high. Be lifted be lifted. Tell God, be lifted. Be lifted in every area of my life. Be lifted. Be glorified. Be magnified. Be lifted, oh God. We thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me just invite you to praise God with a clap of worship as you take your seat. Karibuni, karibuni. At this time, let me invite the elders and the trustees to join me at the front. And for those at home, let me ask you to prepare your elements so that we can, can commune together in the presence of God. Indeed, we are a family, a family of believers. And this is a time where we just take time to remember together what Christ did on the cross and what a privilege that is that we have a God, we have a Savior who died to purchase our salvation. And Paul reminds us in the book of Corinthians and chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. At this time, let me invite you to just go into the presence of the Lord and ask him to to search your heart. Ask him to bring to your attention things that perhaps may not be worthy of him, that perhaps are going on in your life. Ask him to forgive you so that when you come to him, you will be free. You will be free. So just take a minute and ask God, search me, oh God, forgive me those things. Forgive me and free me from them forgive me because I want to worship you with freedom. I want to worship you, oh God, without anything tagging at the back of my mind. I want to worship you. I want to worship you, God. I want to worship you. As the music team leads us in the song that they have just led us, as a deer pants for the water, i 
heart is our desire. Oh God, we want to worship you. We want to yield to you. We surrender everything. Have your way, oh God, in our lives. Have your way, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Have your way. Have your way, oh God. God says, and when he had given thanks, he, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may partake of the bread. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat, this bread and drink this cup. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us partake of the cup together. Let me invite the music team to lead us in that hymn. Are you washed in the blood? So that perhaps if you're here and you do not know the Savior, you are not washed in his blood, you would respond to him but so that the rest of us would respond in thanksgiving and rejoicing that we have been washed in this blood. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing part? Are you washed in the blood of the Oh, 
praise, give him praise, give him praise. Let's pray, church. Our Father in heaven, we want to give you thanks because truly, Lord, you are God in our lives. We thank you this morning, Heavenly Father, for allowing us, Father, to commune with you. We thank you because of your, the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, that was shed on the cross for our sins. And this morning, Lord, we rejoice because, Father, we have life in you. We are grateful for the opportunity, Father, to congregate as a church, and we give you thanks and honor. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you, elders and trustees and your spouses. You may have your seats as I will hand over the service to Reverend Majid. Waweza, waweza, waweza mokosi, waweza mambo yote, wewe. and you want us to pray with you so that we all confess that he is able. He is able to come into our circumstances because he is our God, Emmanuel, the one that we celebrate the blood that was shed on the cross for us. So if you are there and you want us to pray with you for whatever need, as we sing that song once again softly, Waweza Mambo Yote Wewe Mwaminifu. Let me ask you just to rise to your feet that we pray with you. Waweza
Father, you see many of us that are standing this morning. We may not have time to just say why we are standing, but Lord, you are the one who knows from the beginning to the end. You are an all-knowing God. And so, Father, we pray that by your grace, you stretch your hands and touch each and every one of us that are standing, that you meet each and every one of us at a very point of need. Father, there may be those that are also joining us online and they are also standing saying, Lord, come through for me in this situation. Father, you are not limited geographically. So far and away, Father, we claim and we pray that by your grace, you will meet each and every one of us at a very point of need. Father, whether it is a healing situation, we pray for your healing. Whether the Lord is a provision situation, we pray that you are our Jehovah Jireh. Whether the Lord is a situation that needs your restoration, Father, we pray for that restoration. Whether it's a situation, Lord, that needs a reconciliation, Lord, we pray for that reconciliation. Lord, whether it's a prayer for breakthrough in the works of our hands, whether it's in the business or in our workplaces or miraculous financial provision, Father, we pray that by your grace, you meet each and every one of us at a very point of need. So thank you, Lord. Father, today as we continue in our prayer and fasting 21 days, today we are praying for our nation and in particular, Lord, we are praying for the campaigns that are going on. And Lord, we pray for decorum in our campaigns. Lord, we pray against incitement at our political leaders, Lord. Sell their agenda. Lord, we pray that you indeed, by your grace, as we call upon your name, that we'll have the fear of God and the sanctity of life. That, Lord, by your grace, you did not put us in this nation as an accident. So we pray against any incitement. And, Lord, we pray... But in this year, 2022, we pray for peaceful campaigns. And Lord, we pray that you'll also give us leaders that will be able to take us to the next level. Leaders that will be for peace. Leaders that will be for prosperity, prosperity of this nation. But above all, leaders that indeed will have the fear of God. Lord, as we continue to pray, there are those in our midst as well who have lost their loved ones. And we want to commit them to you, for you are the God of all comfort. You are the God that gives us peace and the peace that transcends all understanding. So in the midst of the loss of our loved ones, Lord, will you stretch your hand and encourage and comfort and give peace to our dear ones that have lost their loved ones. Lord, today we pray for the county of Bomet. And Father, we pray for repentance and ask you to heal that land, that land that is very rich, that land that predominantly is agricultural land. Father, we pray that indeed you will heal that land. We pray against tribalistic mindset and negative ethnicity in Bomet. Father, we pray against rigid traditions and customs in the land of Bomet. We pray, Lord, against drunkenness and drug abuse in the land of Bomet. We pray for hope for the society and especially amongst the young ones, the youth, my father. And above all, Lord, we pray for economic growth, whether it's in agriculture, in dairy farming, in the land of Bomet. Father, we pray for your church in the land of Bomet, that your church indeed will continue to grow. We pray for those that serve you as the ministers of the gospel. We pray for revival in that land. And above all, we pray for the restoration to Jesus Christ in Bomet County. And Lord, this we do because as we confess, we know that you are able. So come through for us Lord, like never before. 
As again we sing that song, Waweza, Waweza, Waweza Mokozi. Waweza Mambo Yote. Waweza, Waweza, Waweza the Lord of Lords, in the name of God who is the Father and who is the Son and who is the Holy Spirit and God's people said, said God's people said, amen, amen. Kindly do take your seats. Choir also please take your seats. Let's appreciate the choir. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. They look wonderful, don't they? Come on, let's appreciate them once again. And, and, and let, me, let me just mention this. In case you are on the other side and you know that God has called you into this ministry, maybe you've been in a music ministry before, in high school, in college, uh, in different places, please we are asking you to come and join us. Amen? Come and join us. Uh, especially even the men, please come and join us. And for that matter, we didn't prepare for this at the end of the service. At the end of the service, if you desire and you just want to continue in that ministry, please come, we'll ask Elder Carol Croder just to be around exit one so that uh, you can register with her and then the rest of the process will uh, follow. Thank you very much, uh, choir. May the Lord bless you. Anyone that is visiting with us for the first time, you've not been to Nairobi Baptist Church before, we want to acknowledge your presence with us. Any visitor, you've not been with us before? Yes, please let me ask you to stand. Thank you. Thank you very much, my dear sister. Oh, brother, yes. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, I see two gentlemen behind. Two gentlemen behind. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? In the balcony, is there anyone else? Thank you. Thank you for the three of you. And there is a possibility that a some that will join us as we go along in the service. We value you. And we love visitors. So please, at the end of the service, give us the privilege of knowing you a little bit more. And by God's grace, you'll also get to know us a little bit more. And for that to happen, I'll ask you that at the end of the service, come to exit number eight. Someone will be waiting for you there to receive you. But for now, let's appreciate our visitors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Kindly do take your seats. Amen. Amen. In our prayers, I mentioned about those that are bereaved in our midst. Pray for Elder Mutua and uh, Stephanie Mahiaini. They lost their mother, Mama Abishag Mahiaini, last week. And that burial will be happening tomorrow in Muranga. So please uh, continue to pray for them. The General uh, Jeremiah Kianga and Mama Christine Kianga, uh, together with uh, uh, Mama Florence Ndunda, amongst many others, also lost their mother, the mother to Mama Christine and Florence Ndunda. So please uh, pray for them. The burial will be happening on 25th. Uh, that will be Wednesday uh, uh, this week. And that I will be uh, in uh, uh, Machakos. 
So please uh, kindly, kindly pray uh, for them. Also got uh, information just last evening. Uh, our brother Lazarus Mwema and uh, Josephine uh, Kiluta, Mama Josephine Kiluta, they also lost their brother-in-law, uh, Wilson Dete. And that burial will be happening on 27th, and that will be happening in Kibwezi. So please keep them in prayers. And if you are in a HGF with them, please reach out to them. Uh, support them in prayers, for that is uh, why we have HGF, so that we can have uh, ministry so close to us. The power of a small group, the power of a home group, a fellowship. Uh, so we continue to pray for those that have lost their loved ones. Allow me now to ask the media team to give us video highlights. Welcome to Nairobi Baptist Church, Gong Road. I believe you've had a good week. And thank you for making time to attend our hybrid Sunday service, Karibu Nisana. The following are our notices and upcoming events. This year, we want to trust God to raise 10 million Kenya shillings to grow and go with a 60-40 ratio for the utilization of the funds. 60% will be allocated for grow, to primarily improve infrastructure for worship in our local assemblies, and 40% will be for GO, that is Global Missions and Outreach. The Missions and Outreach portion will be an annual kitty set aside to help us realize the Transforming Nations pillar of our vision. We pray and look forward to a successful resource mobilization in 2022. The Bible says that we shouldn't be unequally yoked with unbelievers, but should this always apply? What if you meet a good person and you want to bring them to Christ through your relationship? Aren't we also told to go and make disciples? Join us as we tackle missionary dating on Primetime, our monthly hangout for young adults ages 19 to 36, happening on the 5th of June, 2022, at the NBC Old Hall from 12 noon to 2 p.m. See you then. Addiction is one of the greatest challenges a marriage can face. Apart from alcohol, addiction can come in many forms such as devices, pornography, opioids, substance abuse or sexual addictions and masturbation. The NBC Marriage Enrichment Ministry invites all couples to a virtual fireside chat entitled When the Waters Are Turbulent, Navigating Addictions in Marriage with Ernest Wamboe from the Relationship Center on Friday 27th May 2022 at 7.30pm. Come and join us as we navigate addiction issues that rock marriages and gain insights on how we can overcome them. Zoom meeting ID and passcode is available in the Weekly Church Bulletin and NBC social media channels. Season 2 of our leadership video segment, The Shepherd's Heart, runs every Friday on our YouTube and Facebook channels at 8pm and broadcast every Tuesday at 10am on Pearl Radio 96.9 FM, the home of fresh and classic hits. Do you sing or play a musical instrument? Do you love to praise God through song? Then the NBC Music Ministry is the place to be. This year we are launching a vibrant choir that will minister in some of our Sunday services. Come, join us. You don't want to miss it. If you would like to be part of this amazing choir, please contact either Carol Croder via email caroline.okiro at gmail.com or Pastor Melina Kemboi via email melina at nairobibaptist.co.ke Are you born again and have not yet been baptized? Discipleship Ministries invite you to send your contact details via email to discipleship at robaptist.co.ke to register for our next class beginning the month of June. We are pleased to announce the bands of marriage between Michael Lavi and Naomi Wanjiro on Saturday the 28th of May 2022. This is the third reading. If anyone has any legal reservations against these individuals being joined in holy matrimony, kindly inform the church in writing by latest seven days before the wedding. You can now like us on Facebook at the Norbert Church. Follow us on Twitter at Norbert Church. Like us on Instagram at Norbert Church. And watch some of our previous messages on the Norbert channel on YouTube and Facebook and on www.norbert.tv. 
For these and other events taking place, kindly refer to the weekly church bulletin. In all seasons, we desire to continue growing into a Christ-like church that is building strong families and transforming nations. Have a great Sunday and a fruitful week ahead. Thank you. Let's appreciate our media team. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Just uh, one or two uh, quick emphases. Uh, this, uh, for the next, uh, for 21 days, we'll be having our prayer and fasting. Today is actually the seventh day. And so please, uh, let's continue to just uh, seek the face of the Lord as uh, we come and as we fast and as we pray together. And for that matter, we have lunch our prayer services, and uh, primarily they are online, where many of us are joined together to pray together. So links normally is sent to our different social media platforms, but I will ask that uh, also media team, uh, Pastor Melina, let us also have it on our website, so that uh, if you are not in any of our social media platforms, if you just go to our website, you will get that link so that we are able to join together from Tuesday, and this week it will be Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday between 1 and uh, 2 uh, p.m. In this particular coming week on Friday, on, on Saturday, uh, we will uh, have an in-person prayers, and that uh, it will be uh, uh, Saturday 28th, in-person prayers. So please come so that we pray together. Uh, as a community, and this in-person is calling uh, us from our different assemblies as well. Uh, that will be happening between 9 and 12 uh, noon, 9 a.m. and 12 noon. So please come so that we join together and we pray together. But also, uh, let me also invite you to join us for Thursday prayer service uh, between 6 and about 7.30. If you're able to come uh, in person, the better. If you're not able to come in person, please also join us online, and indeed the Lord will bless you. We've talked about a resource mobilization, and uh, this year we are trusting God that we'll be able to raise uh, 10 million Kenya shillings collectively, all of our assemblies, and for Ngong Road, 5.5, uh, for Grow and Go. Where grow is that we grow inside here, we grow as a church, and it's only after we have grown that we are able to go. And our budget and our target for Ngong Road is 5.5. Uh, and by God's grace, so far, we've raised about 1 million Kenya shillings. So please, uh, let's continue to give. When that time comes to give, just indicate. Uh, if it's M-Pesa, indicate as an account, either as grow and go, or just resource mobilization. And we pray that by God's grace. We are trusting God that uh, before the election, uh, which is on the 9th of August, we will have uh, met our target. So prayerfully consider, prayerfully consider. So after that, uh, uh, let me invite uh, the person who is going to give us our Bible reading. But before that, our preacher uh, today is our Pastor Elijah Mokaya. He is our youth pastor here at Nairobi Baptist Church. Uh, he joined us about five years ago as a pastoral trainee. And then after that, transitioned into uh, being a pastor, uh, passionate uh, about preaching the word of God. And so we are so happy that uh, he's uh, preaching and bringing God's word uh, today. Our Bible reading uh, will be from the book of uh, uh, I I Isaiah, chapter 58. And I'll invite Patience Ndanu Otieno to bring uh, the Bible reading. Uh, he's uh, a staff in the church. And uh, uh, she is our uh, HR manager. So thank you very much. Our patience uh, bring God's word to us. And soon after that, you'll pray for Pastor Mokaya. Thank you. Um, Isaiah chapter 58. I believe we are there. I'll start reading. Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does, that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. 
They ask me for just decisions and seem eager to, for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To lose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked to clothe them, and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood, then your light will break forth like dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing of fingers and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then, you, then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide your, your all, sorry, let me take that again, verse 11. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will rise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of the broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord and I will cause you to ride in triumph in the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. That's the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Our dear loving and heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this time that we can listen to your word. How I pray that you will prepare our hearts to receive from you and not only to be hearers but doers of your word. I thank you for Pastor Elijah that you have chosen to use today as your mouthpiece. I pray that, Lord, you will speak to him as he speaks to us. And above all, may you receive all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, I pray, trusting and believing. Amen. 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 Candy, let's appreciate um, our HR patients. Thank you so much. Um, and Reverend Majid for leading us so well. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning and praise the Lord. The psalmist declared, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Confession is good for the soul, and so I will start with a confession. Some of you have listened to this sermon before, and so I urge you not to switch off your ears to me. I urge you to um, uphold the spirit of Psalm 62, verse 11. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Or as some versions will say, once you have spoken twice, I have heard. So the Lord has spoken twice, but he gives you once, but he gives you the privilege to hear this 
twice. Amen? It's been one week already on our 21-day prayer and fasting marathon. How has it been for you thus far? Just uh, whisper to your neighbor how this marathon has been for you thus far. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering now, how do I whisper to my neighbor and I've not even started, you can still start. Uh, we still have about 14 days to go. And so I encourage you, let us join together as one local um, church, as one um, community of faith, and let us press on together in this prayer and fasting marathon. You see, fasting is a focus for prayer. What basically fasting does is it focuses us so that we may be able to pray. And so when you feel the hunger pangs, then you're reminded, let me pray. When you have that craving for something you like and you have for a period abstained from it, then it reminds you to commune with your God and with your Father. John Piper defines fasting as a physical expression of a heart's desire for God. Reverend Dr. Tony Evans describes it as abstaining from a physical craving in order to receive a spiritual blessing. Fasting, brothers and sisters, though is a physical thing that we do, has far much more spiritual realities and blessings associated with it. So let me encourage you, if you're here, uh, you have not begun yet. It is not too late. You can join us in the remaining 14 days as we continue to petition God. But imagine getting to the end of the 21 days, and after all the self-denial and self-affliction, only for you to only discover that it was all wasted. That the going without food, the dedicated moments of prayers, the physical strain was all for nothing. That it did not move God. That it was not recognized by him, let alone accepted. That would be a sad affair, wouldn't it? And yet the house of Jacob found themselves in this kind of situation. They fasted and humbled themselves before the Lord, yet he did not see it nor take notice of it. They asked and did not receive. They sought and did not find. They knocked and the door was not opened for them. That is what we read in Isaiah 58. So what then can we learn from their situation so that we do not find ourselves in a similar spiritual quagmire? Paul declares in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. And so the reason why we are reading Isaiah's prophecy to the children of Jacob, Isaiah's prophecy to the people of God, the covenant people of God, the reason why we are reading that today and we are looking at that today is because it was written to teach us so that we might have hope. And this sermon, brothers and sisters, is about hope. That our fasting is not futile. That our fasting ought not to be futile. I pray that as you leave this service today, you will go back home and continue fasting with hope, knowing that your fasting is not in vain, that it moves God, which happens to be the subject of my sermon this morning, fasting that moves God, fasting that moves God. And if there is one thing I would want you to remember, even as you leave this service today, is this assertion that I am making this morning, that true fasting moves God. True fasting moves God. Let us then look at this true fasting as presented to us in Isaiah 58. And so, Father, would you grant me clarity of mind this morning, concision of speech and conviction of heart in my weakness. 
Would you be glorified in Jesus' name? Amen. This sermon is about hope. And the one thing that I want us to know and to notice about true fasting is the hope of true fasting. The hope of true fasting. Now, I'll request you to have your Bible open as we journey together through Isaiah 58, as you check and cross-reference together with me as we look at that passage. But yet, I want us to begin at the end of that passage and then build towards the beginning of that passage. As we labor this morning to see from this scripture that there is hope in true fasting. There is hope in true fasting. And so from verse 8 all the way to verse 12, this is what we see. The hope that you and I get in true fasting. That if we are to truly fast as God has required, as God has recommended, as God has actually instructed us, then there is a hope that the scriptures paint to us this morning. The first hope that I see from this scripture is reprieve. Reprieve. Verse 8. Reprieve. And reprieve basically is an escape from a bad situation or experience. An escape from a bad situation or experience. And so after God had spoken to the children of Jacob about true fasting, which we will get back to, he goes ahead and says, then after you have truly fasted, then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. I focus on the first part of that verse that God promises there is hope for reprieve if we truly fast. And I pray, my brothers, my sisters, that in this period of fasting, may the Lord grant you reprieve. May the Lord grant you reprieve from that disease or of a loved one. May God grant you reprieve from that financial trouble. May God grant you reprieve from that difficult relational crisis. May God grant you reprieve as we continue to truly fast in these 21 days of prayer and fasting marathon. And may this reprieve, brothers and sisters, as is mentioned in the text, come quickly. He says, then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. It will not delay. It will not tarry. I pray that the reprieve that the Lord will cause to abound in your life will come quickly as has been promised in the scripture. This is the first hope that I see. And I pray, brothers and sisters, that we may receive reprieve from the Lord in this season of prayer and fasting, and may it not delay. Secondly, the second hope of true fasting that I see from those passages from verse 8 going on all the way to verse 12. The second thing is righteousness and radiance. This is what part B of verse 8 says. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rare God. Your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rare God. And I wonder this morning if there is a sin that has been besetting you. I pray that in this period of fasting, your righteousness will go before you. This is the good news, brothers and sisters. For us who are believers, we know that we do not have a righteousness of our own, but that Jesus is our righteousness. And so may his righteousness go before you. But not only that, the Bible also tells us that the glory of the Lord will be our rare God. Oh, what a safe place this is to be, to be tucked in between the righteousness of Christ and the glory of God. Righteousness and radiance. Righteousness going before you, the radiance, the glory of God being your rare God to be tucked in between that. Oh, what a glorious thing this is. May, brothers and sisters, your righteousness, I dare say Christ's righteousness go before you. 
and God's glory, God's radiance be your rare God. May you be firmly guarded in God. That is the second hope of true fasting that I see in this passage. The third hope of true fasting that I see in this passage is a response from God. Verse 9 and verse 10. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness, if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noon day. What a sweet thing it is to be heard by God. What a glorious thing for him to answer us when we call on him. How amazing to know that the almighty God, creator of the heavens and the, uh, the majestic one, the majestic one who looks after the affairs of the whole universe would pay attention to you and to me. Will pay attention to our cry. Will pay attention when you call him. That he will respond and say, here I am. And do you know the most exciting thing about this? The most exciting thing about that is that response here, I am, because it is said by the great I am, could easily be rephrased as I am, capital, is here. I am is here. <laughs> when the great I am is here, brothers and sisters, all things are possible. This is the hope of a response from God that when you call on him, when you cry to him, he will respond and say, here I am. Nay, he will declare, I am is here. The great I am will appear. And so may you receive a response from the Lord. May you hear him say, I am here, my son, my daughter, even more, may you be assured by his response that I am is here. And this is the interesting thing, brothers and sisters. This great I am is none other than Jesus, the Christ. Have you read the book of John? And have seen the great I am statements that Jesus makes Jesus is the great I am, so that there is no situation, there is no trouble, there is no circumstance that I am will not appear, I am will not be present. And so this morning, do you have a hunger that nothing in this world can satisfy? He says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. John 6:35. Are you in some sort of darkness? You cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel. He declares, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, 12. Are you wondering this morning how to enter the kingdom of God? He says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. John 10, 9. This morning, do you feel helpless and harassed by the vagaries of life? He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. John 10, 11. Do you have fear of death? He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. John Chapter 11, verse 25. Are you lost and confused? He says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. Do you desire to live and lead a fruitful life? He says, I am the true vine and my Father is the gardener. John 15, 1. Brothers and sisters, in this season of prayer and fasting, may we get that response. Here I am, or better yet, I am is here. The other hope of true fasting is refreshing. Refreshing, verse 11. 
And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. And this morning, if you're feeling dry and weary, if you have a season of dryness, a season of wilderness, may the I am refresh you in this season of prayer and fasting. May you indeed be like a watered garden, like a spring of Water And lastly, the hope of our fasting, restoration, verse 12. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. And I wonder, brothers and sisters, if there are any ruins in your life. Are there any ruins in your family? Are there any ruins in our nation? The hope for us in this prayer and fasting season is that the Lord will restore. He will rebuild the ancient ruins and our children and children's children will build not on ruins but on strong foundations. Breaches will be repaired and streets will be restored. That is the hope that we have if we truly first. And so in this prayer and fasting season I pray that the Lord will restore every personal ruin that you have experienced. May God restore your marriage and your children. May God restore our land and nation so that justice will be our shield and defender and plenty will be found within our borders as we dwell in peace and unity. This is the hope we have when we engage in a true fast. We have the hope that we will receive reprieve from our troubles. The hope of righteousness and radiance tucking us in. The hope of a response from the great I am. The hope of being refreshed and the hope of being restored. We have hope, brothers and sisters, we have hope if we truly fast. But sadly, sadly, if we are not careful, we may not realize this hope. For there is something that stands in the way of a true fast. Let us then turn to the hindrance of a true fast. The hindrance of a true fast. You see, this particular chapter, Isaiah chapter 58, is written to God's people as a rebuke regarding their fasting. It is not that they did not fast, rather it was that they did not truly fast. In other words, they engaged in a fast that was not acceptable by God. And so God asked the prophet to declare to them their transgression, to loudly proclaim their sin that hindered them from truly fasting. What then was their hindrance? What was this hindrance to true fasting? The first hindrance is hypocrisy of religion. Hypocrisy of religion. Verse 1 and 2 says this, Cry aloud, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their transgression, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the judgment of their God. They ask of me righteous judgment. They delight, they delight to draw near to God. You see, the people of God could not be faulted for their lack of religion or religious activities. At the time of this prophecy, God is rebuking them, not for neglecting their religious duties, but rather the hypocrisy that surrounded their religion. It seemed that they delighted to know God's way and that they delighted to draw near to him. Notice verse 2, yet they seek me daily and Delight to know my ways. And then towards the end, they ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. And what the passage is communicating there, it is not that these people delighted to know God's ways. It is not that these people delighted to draw near to God. Rather, it seemed. From the outside, this is someone that you would actually qualify to be a lover of God. This is someone that would qualify to be a worshiper of Yahweh. 
and yet God is calling out their hypocrisy. Why? Because how can you delight to know God's way? How can you delight to draw near to God? And yet, you don't do his righteousness. And yet, you forsake the judgment of God. Their behavior contradicted what they claimed to believe. And that is what hypocrisy is all about. When our behavior contradicts what we communicate as believing. But brothers and sisters, you see, hypocrisy is not necessarily like that Christian lady that went into a matatu. And as is, is the experience with some matatu touts, they had an exchange of words, but this lady was smarter, if you know what I mean, than the matatu tout. And so she won in the exchange and she could not be silenced. She went on and on and on and on, heaping abuses and insults upon this matatu tout until she got to her stage. And just when she was about to alight, she told him, and it can only be better said in Swahili, for those that don't understand Swahili, you are lucky that I am a Christian. That is hypocrisy. But yet the kind of hypocrisy presented here is a dangerous kind of hypocrisy. Because this is the kind of hypocrisy that you are actually able to fool others. That others following your life can say, this guy, I can vouch for him. I can vouch for this girl that she is truly a believer. That she loves God. In fact, one might even fool themselves into believing their own lie. But the worst of all about this hypocrisy of religion is when it assumes that even God can be fooled. Hypocrisy of religion, brothers and sisters may fool others, may even fool you, but it cannot fool God. For God does not look at external appearances and works, but rather he looks and sees the heart. Beware, brothers and sisters, of this hypocrisy, for this kind of hypocrisy is deadly. In fact, Jesus does say something to that effect in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to verse 23, when he declares, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evil doers. And it's easy to read that passage and just skip through it. But these were people that were convinced they were right with God. That is why they are wondering, how don't you let us in? Why can't you let us in? We prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We did many great works in your name. And Jesus tells them, ah, 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 away from here. I never knew you. Why? Because hypocrisy of religion, brothers and sisters, will cause you to lie even to yourself. But unfortunately, you can't lie to God. What is the nature? Of your religion my brother my sister do you actually delight to know God's ways do you actually delight to draw near to God or does it only seem so enough to fool others and even yourself but not God this morning I pray that we would examine ourselves and this hypocrisy of religion also leads to another hindrance to true fasting and this is what God was rebuking his people for hollow rituals. Hollow rituals. Verse 3 to verse 5. You see, God's people were alarmed that God did not take notice of their fasting. That he did not acknowledge their humbling themselves. And so they made their protest, their protest against God. And they asked him, why have we fasted and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? And when God responded, he called out their hollow rituals. For their rituals of fasting were empty, hollow, and devoid of substance. 
Theirs was a confirmation of what God had declared earlier through the same prophet in Isaiah 29, 13, when the Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. They claimed to honor God, yet dishonored him in their hearts. Their fasting was hollow and not from the heart. And if our fasting is to be true and thus move God, then it must proceed from our hearts. Also note that the result of their hollow rituals is that it did not change them at all. It did not confront their sinful tendencies. And so God says, how can you claim to be fasting yet it is your pleasure that you are pursuing? How can you claim to be fasting and yet you mistreat and oppress those who work for you? And as a side note, does your domestic manager testify of your relationship with God? In this season of prayer and fasting, have you been kinder? Have you been more loving? Because this is what God had against the children of Jacob. You fast and then you pursue your own pleasures. You mistreat, you oppress your workers. What kind of fasting is this, God asks. How can you claim to be fasting and yet you go on ahead to quarrel and to strive with others and to fight? How is this even fasting that I can accept? God seems to ask them. And God goes on to say, it is not mere self-denial. And self-affliction that moves me. A humbling of self. A bowing of the head like a reed. That is not the kind of fasting that moves him. That kind of fasting is unacceptable to him. And this morning I wonder what kind of fast you have been engaging in. And I pray that it will not be hollow. But rather straight from the heart. And it will be the kind that will not leave you comfortable in your sin. That if there is any transformation to happen in this season of prayer and fasting, you will be delivered from that sin that easily besets you for the glory and honor of God's name. Because that is the kind that moves God. That is a true fast. But our gracious God not only points out the wrong way in which his people are fasting, but he also points them and asks this morning to the right way. Lastly, let us look at the how to truly fast. How to truly fast, or the how of true fasting. Verse 6 and 7. You see, brothers and sisters, God himself declares the kind of fast that he has chosen. Not Nairobi Baptist Church, not your pastors, not your elders, not your trustees, no. No. God himself declares the kind of fasting that he has chosen. This fasting that God has chosen comes with freedom, justice, and charity. Freedom and justice to the bound and oppressed and charity to those in need. If we are to engage in a true fast, then we will be aware of the people around us. A true fast is a classic case of what, James, uh, of what John says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Brothers and sisters, fasting is voluntary denial and affliction of self. It is supposed to make us sensitive to those involuntarily denied and afflicted. In our hunger, we ought to remember those who go hungry, not by choice, but by circumstances outside of their control. In our affliction, we ought to be reminded of those who are afflicted, not by any choice of theirs or fault of theirs, but by people or events outside of them. And so God is calling us in these 21 days of prayer and fasting marathon to engage in a true fast so that you and I may bring freedom to those bound by wickedness by proclaiming the freedom that is only found in Christ. 
that we will be burdened by our friends, our colleagues, and family members who have not yet come to saving faith. That they will be delivered from their life of sin. Also, we will advocate for justice for those who are oppressed. And if it happens that the Lord is actually convicting you that you are the oppressor, that you will repent and stop your oppression. In addition to this, brothers and sisters, practice the true religion that James says in James chapter 1 and verse 27. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. To look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. And I wonder, what if, just what if, you use the money that you would have spent in meals, now that you are fasting, to actually give someone food, provide someone with clothing or even shelter? What if, just what if? Is our fasting merely an opportunity for us to grow our savings account? Or is it an opportunity for us to practice this kind of true fasting that reminds us there are people who are going hungry and they are not fasting. Circumstances have has forced them. And so in this period of prayer and fasting, brothers and sisters, let us press on in true fasting because we know that is the kind of fasting that will move God. And I end where I started, that this sermon is about hope. Because this is our hope. That when we continue in this true fasting, God will grant us reprieve from all our troubles. That God will guard us with his righteousness and radiance. That God will respond to us as the great I am. That God will refresh us and that God will restore us. That is the fasting that moves God. That is true fasting. Let us cry out to our Father. Who art in heaven?
Father and our God, that is our prayer this morning. That Lord, even as we go through the 21 day of fast, by your grace, search our hearts so that our fasting is not just going to be a hypocrisy of religion. Father, will you convict our hearts so that our fasting, Lord, will not just be a hollow ritual that we do as a church, O oh God. Will you take us back in how to fast in a way that our hearts will be so connected with you. And the Lord, when our hearts are so connected with you through this 21 day of fast, that by your grace we will find our reprieve. The Lord, by your grace, we will see our righteousness and will see the radiance that comes from you. The Lord, by your grace, we will receive a response from you for whatever it is that we are trusting you for. The Lord, by your grace, there will be a restoration, Lord, in our lives. That, Lord, there will be a restoration even in our church so that our church will always be found to the place that you originally designed for the church to be. Lord, that is our prayer this morning. So, Lord, in the remaining 21 days, our desire ultimately is to have our hope only in you. Our desire is that, Lord, when all is said and done, we will be found to be closer to you like never before. And Lord, as you restore us, that you will birth something new in our lives, that you will birth something new in our church. For the honor and for the glory of your name, for this, Lord, we ask, trusting and believing in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and God's people say it. Say it, God's people say it. Come on, appreciate him, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. Even as we appreciate his servant, Pastor Mokaya, please kindly do take your seat. And just a kind reminder once again, we will break the fast on the 5th of June. And that 5th of June will coincide with the day of the Pentecost. So we are trusting that the Lord will come through for us like never before. Amen. 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 So let's go in faith, trusting and preparing ourselves for that wonderful visitation that we trust that we'll see. It's time to give. Amen. It's time to give. Amen. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Please, will you give cheerfully? Will you give generously? If you desire to give towards a grow and go resource mobilization, indicate as so and if you are right on the green uh, seat which is on my left please uh, come come from your left give you go back on your right if you're in the middle please come from your right and you go back on your left if you're on the blue and on my right please come from the wall side which is your left and then you go back uh, on your right and the Lord will bless you as the worship team uh, minister to us. Please, we can start. Thank you very much. If you are giving uh, through a uh, M-Pesa, pay bill number 516500. Who gives all of our
you hear our prayers father we thank you because you answer our prayers and father we thank you because when we come before you in sincerity and in honesty and in accordance with your will lord you answer our prayers you respond to our prayers. There is a reprieve, O oh God. Lord, you restore us. And Lord, by your grace, you impute righteousness and radiance in our lives. And so Lord, that is our prayer again as we continue for the next 14 days. We want to thank you, Lord, for the giving of your people this morning. And we pray that indeed you'll bless each and every one that has been able to give. And even those that may not have been able to give today, so that again when we come into your presence, we gather in your presence, we'll say this is what the Lord has blessed us with. And Lord, that which you have given today, we pray that by your grace, it will only be used for the extension of your kingdom. We thank you for the ministry of our ashes and the prayer, prayer of blessing upon each and every one of them as well. So we want to bless you. For Lord, this we ask, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's appreciate our ashes as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, let's appreciate our worship team choir, to be precise. Thank you. May the Lord bless you for your ministry. Before we finish the service, again, if you are on the other side and you want to join our choir and our music ministries, please, as we go out, don't go. Elder Carol Croder will be waiting for you there on exit one just to take your details so that you join this wonderful, wonderful ministry. When we introduced the visitors, we had three gentlemen, and perhaps you came uh, after we had introduced the visitors, and you want just 
to join them and probably give us an opportunity to know you a little bit more. So to all our visitors, please come to exit number eight. And I can see our brother Peter Apollo is very much ready for you. A quick reminder, we continue with our 21 days of fasting. And maybe as Pastor Mokaya said, you did not begin uh, when we started on Monday. Please, ours is not just a religious exercise to tick the days. So you have an opportunity to begin even tomorrow for the next 14 days. And I believe that the Lord will minister to you. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we join together, lunch our prayers. And on Saturday, we come together between 9 a.m. and uh, 12 noon just to pray together and to join together. And so let me ask that we stand as we finish the service. And as uh, we do so, uh, Pastor uh, Wangare Benson will be leading us in the benediction. And Paul reminding the Colossians and us today, he says in Colossians 3, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you are called to peace and be thankful let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms hymns and songs from the spirit singing to God with gratitude in your hearts and whatever you do whatever whether in word or deed and as we've been reminded even in fasting do it all in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Lord, would you walk with us through this week? Would you remind us what we've had today, O oh God, that we may reflect who you are, O oh God, that we truly may be Christians as you have called us. So would you walk with us this week in Jesus' name? And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Have a lovely week. Oh